Welcome everyone, Chirping Zebras tonight, episode four. Mark Riley, alongside Gino Binda, and we have a great guest tonight. Before we get to that, we're coming to you from AOA Studios in Beverly, best place to do a podcast or record music or whatever you want to do. And uh, want to thank our sponsors as always, Moby Cuts, best uh, barbershop up in the North Shore, right here in Beverly. And our other sponsor, we actually have the owner here tonight with us. Uh, our other sponsor is Referees Crease, and joining us tonight, it happens to be the guy who runs the referees, Crease, Gene Binder, who also happens to be your dad. That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chirping Zebras. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah. It should be exciting sitting between these two comedians. So. <laughs> yeah. you're, uh, you're definitely in the middle, that's for sure. You get um, that right. Much like the referee in the yep. middle. We're just your linesman tonight. Yep. Um, uh, first, we usually start with uh, how you get into refereeing. How did you get into it? Because it's not something that we, you know, we grow up dreaming of. Yeah, uh, actually. Well, maybe you did because of him, but. Well, I had no choice. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually true. Well, my daughter wants to ref, so that's good. She oh, go. told her coach she's going to quit hockey at 14 and start refing. <laughs> Smart girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, basically, my, my my road through all of this was uh, 73, 74. That's when I started doing my first games, 1973. Uh, it was the height of the busing. In, in South Boston and yep. Boston, a very turbulent time. And uh, one of the things that my, my parents wanted me to do was keep busy. So I played hockey, we were always skating, and uh, one of the things, no sim, nothing different than at that time, same thing today. They didn't have enough officials to work the games. So uh, I used to go down on Saturday and Sunday mornings, referee the six, seven, and eight games because uh, the veterans were taking the afternoon games. But I went down and I really took a liking to it. And uh, after a while, they end up asking me, hey, look, <clears throat> if you could just make, make the assignments for us and you could take the games that you want, right? And uh, that's how it really just all started. I started refereeing there. And then uh, it was really difficult for the kids in the city to get games outside, like the Greater Boston League and uh, was like the Burlington League that was up here that the uh, I forget it might be the Greater Boston League, but at any rate, we could we couldn't we couldn't break that that mold. It was really for people that were outside the city that really controlled that. USA Hockey was still in its infancy, and uh, I had been working for a couple of years, and then I got a job at the Globe. I was working at the Globe for a while, so I was doing that in between just to help, you know, with the finances. And then I ran into Terry Partridge. Huh. Grandpa. Uh, Grandpa. Grandpa. I cannot not look at him and think about Joe Biden. Joe. Oh. oh, my God. That was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> uh, but my buddy Greg Murphy. <clears throat> yes, that uh, was Doing awesome. the comedy. Called him at, Joe Biden. <laughs> at the referee's crease, uh, you know, yep. Christmas oh, party. Yep. Right? We had a couple comedy of night. comedians. Comedy night. You know, yeah. take care of the boys. And, oh, man, that was absolutely hysterical. I can't get that image on me. But Terry, yeah, so Terry, Terry worked at the Globe, uh, and we started talking one afternoon, and he kind of took me under his wing. He was bringing me down to Cohasset, and I got a chance to see some town hockey that was, back then was travel hockey, so it was a big deal. It was outside of the youth hockey stuff that I was doing. And then uh, I got into Nihoa in 1984 or 85. <clears throat> uh, I know a great guy, Tommy Lynch, God rest his soul. Tommy he, Lynch, uh, yeah. he did a lot, a lot for uh, referees at the college level. So he had Terry Podgers taking care of everybody at the lower levels, and then Tommy, Tommy Lynch was... No. Uh, when, when you Very first good. started with Nihoa, right? Yeah. Like, you didn't get the big games right away. Like, what was it? What was the process like getting in? What was it? You know, like because you had to work your way yeah. in. It was like an apprenticeship, and it yeah. still is now. But now it's just the, the numbers aren't there. Was it's, that before I got suspended? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so you first shocking. Yeah. No, but it's true, right? It's a good story. It's it's sometimes it's about availability, right? Yeah. And I work nights at the Globe, so. Uh, I had just got into to, to Nihoa, and, and at the time, uh, you had to serve a year apprenticeship, right? You had to work right. with people, and they really cared about development and all that stuff. The hockey community was still small, and the big games, right, back then, they were big games, right? It's not like today where there's just so many, so many avenues for kids to go, right? right. So the hockey's dilute a little bit. But um, one of the things that how I advanced was Richie Folks from Salty. Um, he worked uh, in the prep schools. Right, and they couldn't find people to work in the prep school, so he took me under his wing. Him, Marty McDonough, Jimmy Doyle, all those, all those guys. If they they knew I was available, so my availability became a plus. Right? Yep. They Marty always McDonough say, a lot of plug, yeah. yeah, right. Marty McDonough, yeah, the commissioner. Yeah. I'm the commissioner. I'm the commissioner. <laughs> I've talked a lot about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
One of my all-time favorites is Mike Odessa saying uh, when Marty was doing the championship game, he goes, you know who gave me this game? Me! Me! And <laughs> Jesse was great. He, uh, you know, God rest him. He was he was one of the true characters in hockey. I uh, really liked working underneath him too. But that's how I really how things took off. And then I started working professional hockey. I started uh, Brendan Watson uh, had me yeah, yeah. in the in the OUSHL uh, before it became the East Coast League. Right. And I did a couple of years there. And then you know life gets in the way. I had the kids, and you know I took the the Globe job, and and things transformed from there. But the best thing about it was. I got some experience that nobody else had because I was willing to travel. My first game was in Utica in like 1980, 85, 86, long, long time ago. And uh, th- that they say, the good hockey doesn't come to you, you got to go to it. So if anybody's out there thinking about how easy this thing, and if you think, you know, working in uh, the Murphy Rink and Salty is going to get you where you're going, it doesn't happen. You know, if the, if the game opens up and it opens up 200 miles away, well, I'm going to take that chance just to get my foot in the door. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby yeah. Bernard tells a great story about his first Hockey East game. And look at all the bean pots and championships he's done yeah. and all the frozen fours. And, you know, he was on a family <clears throat> vacation down the Cape with his with his family and, you know, got the call. Yep. And just went. Yep. That was it. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I think, you, like, back in the day, you'd drive, like, out to Utica. Yeah. You weren't making... The money that some yeah. of the some some guys are making now. Yeah, I was I was really excited on my way out. I got stopped by the state police on the way out. I got like a twenty five dollar speeding ticket, and then I was still pumped up on the way back, and I got another twenty five dollar speeding ticket by the same two guys. So uh, <laughs> it's just stuff you can't so that make. Was a game for you. Yeah, uh, no minus. Oh, I didn't pay the gas right, oh, yeah, and then you yeah. put, the referee didn't help me out. Brendan Watson made me buy because it was my first time. So you know, net loss of about eighty back then was a lot of money. Absolutely. But you think about opportunities like the Briganti twins, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Dan uh, Shatney calls me up one night. He goes, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in a big gym. He goes, I have nobody. And I goes, are you sitting down? And he goes, yeah, I, I'm sitting down. And I forgot which Briganti it was, but I goes, look, I got a pair of 18-year-old twins, and I'm, they're 18 at the time, and they go in and they do number four and number five in the country, I think it was at the time. It was BU and... Brown when Brown was really good, one of the top five Brown teams. Province. Yeah. At any rate, they go in and they nailed it, right? And they never looked back. Like the following year, they were in the front, they were doing a regional. Yeah. So again, it's just about opportunity, right? You create opportunities, and that's one of the things that. Bill Belichick, right? Dependability is the best. Availability is the best. Of, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Well, right? I think, and 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 the, I think a theme in refereeing, I think we all can speak to it, and and our past guests have speak. We all have those few people that helped us mm-hmm. get to where we were going or gave us that break or gave mm-hmm. us that opportunity, and that kind of opened the door to where we all ended up. Yeah, because you create – it's like anything else. <clears throat> uh, being part of a group is a big thing. Today, that's not so much, right? Because yep. everybody wants to be where they want to be yesterday. We talk about yep. that all the time, yep. right? They don't want to put any time into it. Uh, I think the big thing that I struggle with today is that – you know, officials, they really have the upper hand here because it really is a labor shortage. Mm-hmm. And it, the question today is not where the better game is. It's how close, how much, and with who. Right. And if it's past 7 o'clock on a Saturday night, I don't want the game. That's the way it is, right? Saturday night for us when we were coming up, that was like BCCM. You wanted to be on that game. Yep. Right? Today, oh, I'm not working past 5 o'clock. <laughs> you know, but, Right. And, that's, and they don't the have check to. doesn't bounce, right? Yeah. 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 That, they don't right? have to. That's the well, thing. That's, a, that's a big problem. There's more hockey than there ever was. There's less officials. and uh, Money's pretty good. It's really, really, really good. We've good. done a good job yeah. getting the rates up. And that, that leads to an, another big problem that we're having, right, when we talk about where we are in the state of the game. Uh, for serious conversation for like two minutes, this is like what's really happening. People think the officiating shortage is below us. Like you listen to USA Hockey while we're bringing all these people in. The real, real shortage is up top. And what I mean by that is you're, you're losing the college officials. They're all maxing out. They're all aging out. And that's experience that we'll never get back. We'll never get that back, right? Yep. So now we get these kids that are in, and they're not working the big game. Like, I got kids that are working for me six months. Hey, how come I'm not refing yet? I'm looking at them. I go, you haven't done 40 games in the lines, and you want to and you want to ref. They want right. to, yeah, they want to ref Division One. Yeah. And I go, well, how many games do you have in the ambience? And, and you know what the answer is? It's like 30, 40. Yeah. I go, 
I did like 110 in a season, like when I was like 18. So yeah. I was like, what do you mean 40? I go, and you know, like there's no experience. Like you can't teach experience. Well, even back in the day, like Hockey Night in Boston, we talk about. Yeah. Even back then, that was a big tournament. Not everyone worked that tournament. No, you had, you a, had a you had a you not had only to know somebody to, to get in. Right. For, um, uh, you know, and Jimmy Doyle right. was the one. Like you, you got me in with Jimmy. Yep. And you know, it, you, he still regrets not, that, by the way. Well, I'm sure. Uh. Um, <laughs> and I got him back though in lacrosse. Uh, you got you and him got me into lacrosse too. That's right. Yeah. Oh, ref lacrosse. Talk yep. about a racket. Yeah. Um, but you really did good look. Oh, you look it, good it, in those tights, baby. You I can get tell a you that. Picture of him when he was all roided out with oh, his yeah. shirt. Like if you burped, your shirt was going to yeah. get split. I swear to God. Oh, that was awesome. I, I look good. I had no yeah, idea what were, I was doing, but, but I look good yeah, in that, my like cross you, uniform. Right, but those yeah. white shorts, oh, baby, so all day. You could tell what religion I was. That's yeah. for sure. Those are the <laughs> kind of tight. <laughs> so, but going back to hockey night. Uh, <laughs> but No, but what, yeah. my point was, now... You, you like no one has to work to even to get, get to, into to, a tournament during the summer. That was a summer tournament. Yeah, like the Chowder Cup, gotta, people can come. Right, oh my God! Like we're making that kind of an event now, which is pretty good. Right? Yeah, now but that like used something. to be no one. No one worked. Out. You had to. You had to know somebody to get in there. Get, yeah, know yeah. someone, and you had to bring Ned something Bunyan, to the table. Yeah. Right, you know. And the, and ambience. and one of the things that yeah, Bunyan, one yeah. of the best, right? Ned. Whether you were best. one, two, or five officials, you wore the armbands. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone had armbands yeah. on. It was awesome. And I actually, I kind of like that for one reason. You get seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because good, yeah, because yeah, one of the things that we don't think about, right, is like where it's tough to see us. If you're a linesman, it's it's tough to see somebody, right? But with the ambience, when you're out there, they look up, they see the orange, they'll 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 flinch and try to get around you. Linesmen sometimes you're taking just blast and yeah, yeah. they didn't even see it and it's true they don't because they don't see it we kind of mix into everything right but going back to hockey night that was a that's where you you got looked at for the colleges you know yeah. back then you know the all, all the supervisors used to come and they and they watch we kind of have that stuff going on with the junior programs now in the summer we bring in the hockey East supervisors and they got a good thing at harvard going there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to be seen yep but they're few and far between where you're talking about the top 18 guys in a region, and the guys underneath us, right, are not, they're just there. And they're not putting that effort in to get to that next level because they know how easy it is. Well, it's shared right? knowledge, too, right? Like, you need to have that shared knowledge passed down. Like, I, like, <clears throat> like you need someone to kick you in the ass when, you, when you're just kind of astray, right? Like, you're just out there, you get your hands in your pocket, you're leaning on the boards, right? And then your buddy's over there doing the same thing. No one's setting you straight. Now everybody's pissed off at you, and you're getting yelled, chased out of the rink. So, like, you need that veteran presence. You need someone to, to look up to. You need someone to itemize. Like, you know, like, I don't know. 100%. And one of, one of the things that we're doing now, now that, you know, the transition of the company is coming a little bit better and he's taking more and more, one of the things that I want to do is get back to really get us to where we were, getting our fannies back into the buildings and actually talking to kids, right? Seminars on Zooms, that's great. There's nothing like being in a room with shared experiences and be able to talk about things. And, and that was the best part about growing up with like all those guys, right? Like you got like the crabs and everybody, you, you go to like a bar or you go wherever you're at and you guys always used to meet up and everybody used to go to each other's games and support each other and this and that. But now yeah. everybody's running this. But I always learn from just those conversations, right? Like I was like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, like everyone's laughing. Oh, remember we said that to that coach and this and <laughs> It's like, like we make fun of my buddies are all cops. It's like ref talk, cop talk, right? And like, and that's, that's true. And, and that's really true. Like, there's no, there's no camaraderie. I, I, I tell everybody now, it's like, what's refereeing like? And I say it's like the '67 Red Sox. After the game, everybody goes home in their own limousines. They yeah. don't, they don't go out. They don't know how to relax and enjoy the moment. Right. Right. To me, it's always been about the best game that I could possibly do. I yeah. loved traveling. Right. If, if there was a big tournament, like myself and Jimmy Doyle. We made the pilgrimage every year to Northwood, right? Yep. It was all the best prep school teams and junior teams in the country over a four-day period. And people go, "What are you going up there for?" Right? You know, you can you, you make the same money here. It wasn't about the it wasn't about the money. It was about the experience and the laughs and Nothing the like memories. Travel with your best friend and right? doing a tournament, make the van the money up. and just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Took the van up there, right? Yeah, we took the we van. Was that the Luke Galvin trip? Uh, yeah, but well, we won't talk about that one. But we'll let Luke tell that story when he comes on. Yeah, there's been a lot of great stories coming out of Lake Placid. Oh, uh, uh, there's a few. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tommy McDonald. But yeah, but I think it, you know what? It, it's it. You mentioned that, and I think we see that, and and I think it's this generation of the phones, right? 
Like back in the day, we didn't have phones. We didn't have anything. I mean, we, I remember unfolding maps and having the Rand McNally thing was all piped up when we were trying to find rinks in the middle of nowhere. And, um, although Chris Rooney screwed me one time, (laughs) he, we were living in Iowa, Des Moines, and I'm going to Rochester, Minnesota for the first time. And I said to him, uh, how do I get there? He goes, well, you go north, you get on whatever the road was, I-10 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think that's in Florida, whatever the road was. He goes, um, you, you get off. I go, do you get off the first one you hit or the second one? He goes, the second one. I said, all right. So I loop around. He goes, yeah. Well, I looped around. He goes, it's 50 miles. The exit's 50 miles after you get on the highway. So at 50 miles, I'm going, there's no exit. So I get off the next exit. I pull into a gas station. I say, yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking for Rochester, and the guy started laughing. He goes, "It's a hundred miles back that way." <laughs> oh, you can't go the wrong way. You can't get there from no. here. <laughs> I had a, and now, no cell phone. Had oh, stop. you had to pull over. I, had a, yeah. I made two phone calls. The first one was to Rooney to curse him out, yeah. and then the second one was to the rink to tell him I'm going to be a little late. And I got I got there at the end of the first period, and um, I ended up jumping on and doing the game. But it, it's just a funny story that we didn't have GPS, you know. And of course, Chris gave me it back and said. You know, well, why didn't you look at a map? I yeah. said, well, you, I, you know. Hey, but you it, fucked trust, you me. trust it. <laughs> exactly. But the, my point is, in the game, like, when you're in the locker room before the game, that was always my favorite time. Yes. Stretching, talking, sharing yep. stories, talking about the game coming up, talking about different crazy stuff, or who fought who the night before, what you heard about the a game. A lot of game knowledge, right? Now, we go in the room, and you got four guys on their phones. Oh, take a pic, right. take a selfie. I tell everybody yeah, right? not to do that. Oh, you could be like Ryan Sweeney, have the sports page sitting back with your feet up, not a worry in the world. He's just going to go out and do the game, right? Everybody's like, they're all tense and stuff. Like, how's this game going to go? Hang on, he's sitting back. He's usually running in right at game time. No, he, no. No, he's, no, he was, you know what? A, uh, maybe once in a while, but he was very, he, he played the game well. He knew what he needed to do. If he's there but, early, no. he gets a hot dog and a popcorn. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. sitting there and, you know. Uh, I, I did a game with him. I, gonna tell the story i did a game with tweens over at um it was bc high it was cm versus bc high oh yeah yeah yeah. and so we're over at uh this was a the couple boys, years ago right? um over no we it was uh bc high's home it was at umass, oh, UMass. Boston. Okay, yeah. and uh we made a bet whoever called the first penalty oh, lost so i mean people were getting killed and we're just going back and forth and next thing you know there's the most obvious trip and his hand goes up and I scream across the ice, I win! <laughs> he just was pissed. But he's awesome. Yeah. I love Swedes. But yeah, he did. He, he was really good for us. Uh, he's had a couple of good runs, and uh, you know, hope he finishes off in the same fashion. He is a kid that really worked hard. So yeah, I mean, the coolest thing was working the, uh, that national championship game, and you know, I was with the hockey East crew. He's with Atlantic. And, you know, you go out and take pictures with your crew, you're skating around. Like, they give us, like, the modern skate, and you get to feel the building atmosphere or whatnot. First picture at Center Ice was me and him. Oh, two, yeah. Two well, City you guys kids. did games when you were like 14, oh, 15, we right? started, I was 11 years old. He was 12. Father's Day. Yeah. We went we started up, on Father's Day We went up to 11. Skate 3 and did the clinic. And me and Sweetie never looked back. Like, yeah. worked the Coast League together, the whole thing, right? Nash, like, regionals. Yeah, think about that. We did that. a final in Atlantic together. Like, yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Think about that. Sweetie was on the West Coast. You were out here. Two kids from Southie lived like two miles apart. And the both years are working at the highest level you could possibly be at where you are at that level, right? Yep. It's pretty unique when, when you think about it. He went to the USHL. He lived in yeah. you know, Billings, and I lived in Omaha. And he went through. He actually lived in Chicago, too, I think, for a season. Yeah. And then Pensacola. That was nice. That's a place to live. I got a story down. We, we had a good one down there. We had a Southern Pro trip, right? The first three games of the uh, playoffs. Boom. They, they swept, right? So... I had a trip down there, flying down Monday, game Tuesday, Wednesday, got canceled. So we was picking up on Friday, right? So you, uh, Mono calls us. He's like, hey, we're going to move your flight. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> we'll I go, I got yeah. a place to stay. I go, just let us. So me and my roommate, Charles, <laughs> we went down there and spent the week down in Pensacola. With them. Oh. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. Actually, Scotty Malone was down there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, you I, talked I, to him about that tonight. And now him. Him. They, yeah. I ran into him last night. It was his birthday. And we're in the... We're in La Scala. He come in. I look over, and there he is. And he goes, "Hey, there's the guy I gave 14 stitches to." <laughs> <laughs> Hockey night in Boston. <laughs> Any story that starts like that is a good story. And it's a great has, story. It usually has roots in Southie. Let's yeah. be honest. But oh, it's yeah. a great story, right? Yeah. So I always wore a helmet, and the shields were just coming out. So it was Hockey night in Boston, and it was a pretty big game. I, uh, like 
a lot of the Catholic kids were all playing, and uh, McEachran and all those guys are playing, and, and he was at Don Bosco when they were a couple of kids from CM. So I take the helmet off. It's me, Ned Bunyan, and Frank Keel, right? It was three men. It was the playoffs that were coming in. So I'm working the lines with Keel. Bunyan's in the middle. I'll never forget this as long as I live. Scotty, Scotty and I think it was McEachran started to get into it, right? And Scotty had his stick up. And he didn't mean to catch me. I was just standing too close. And he gives me a zipper right here. And I'm sitting down on the ice. I know I get hurt. And Ned Bunyan comes up, calm as can be. Mr. Binder, stay right where you are. You were seriously injured. <laughs> and I look up, and Frank Keogh is absolutely chalk white, right? So they got me. They got this big turbo coming on. Right? They got me all stitched up. And the, 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 the whole thing about the story is Eric Doyle, who ends up being a great referee, Jimmy oh, yeah. Doyle's son. Jimmy Doyle's son. He's 14 years old, and I have no way of getting my car uh, out of there. He's 14, <laughs> takes the car keys, and follows me in an ambulance at 14 years old to the Stoneham Hospital. That's awesome. You can't, you can't he was a mature 14. Yeah, he was mature. Hey, <laughs> he, was he was the only guy I know. <laughs> hey, think about it. We were down in uh, Washington, D.C. He sat at the other end of the bar. Was he, he was, uh, let's put it this way, he wasn't eligible, but he's sitting down there, and uh, he just looks up at the, the bartender. Two more, please. The guy comes over. <laughs> Washington, it was Washington and Washington, the Bruins. Boston, yeah, yeah it was a great trip. Game. That was awesome. Yeah, he's sitting down the thing reading the newspaper. I'll have two more, please. <laughs> Didn't That's bother awesome. him at all. That's awesome. All good. Pensacola, uh, awesome. what's cool about there, the Ice Pilots, they were in the East Coast League when I was down yep. there. Al Peterson. Yeah. Um, who I actually yeah. just did a thing with That's the Bruins right. alumni with. Yeah. Uh, awesome guy. He was the coach there yeah. no in, in, in Pensacola. And we shared some stories. And um, it was pretty funny what he remembered of certain refs. Oh, and, I bet, yeah. And uh, we won't name names, but some of them are still working in the National Hockey League. And yeah, they, think about they it, right? They were very popular back then. Yeah. Uh, but I'll I'll leave that one alone. Yeah, think about it. Right now we're running the Southern Pro League. Yeah. Right. We get on yeah, Pensacola. You, yeah. And, yeah. It's a, a, right now. Here's something you played in, and you'll be transitioning over yeah. to that. I got my right? yeah. I got my start there. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, just a, it's amazing how the the circle just oh, yeah. kept going. Right. Then we're involved. Too. And then you got you got guys like Joe Werns, who one of my favorites from the East Coast League. Oh yeah. Be, he worked you know, when I was yeah. down there. He, he was one of the my, best. Yeah. He was my boss. Little Brian. It was Brian Lewis and you know Joey, he was like the intern. Little Joey. Joey. <laughs> Jesus, Gene, you won't believe what happened to me last night. <laughs> oh, he was awesome. Oh yeah. Oh, he's the best. I took him out one night in Buffalo. His hair was. It's a great story. He goes, it's 11 o'clock at night. He goes, you know how I am, right? 11 o'clock at night. I'm just starting, that's, starting the engines up, that's right? That's pregame. Yeah. yeah. Worked so the globe, so yeah. he says to me, he goes, hey, Gene, you want to go out for a couple? I go, Joe, it's 11 o'clock. You sure you want to do that? Off we go. We get out of town. We're on Chip Chippewa Street, and I bury him, right? About 4.30 in the morning, put him in a cab, right? Because he's going to one hotel, I'm going to the other. The kicker is we have to give presentations on the leagues at 7 o'clock in the morning, Right? The, it was the NHL stuff that was going on. So yep. it was the first year of the combine. So we're giving our speech. I come downstairs. I'm in a suit, right? I got a suit tie, the whole ball of wax, and I'm sitting there. And Joey Ears comes in. He's still sweating from the night before. And he's looking at me. And I'm sitting in the chair like this, right? Not, nothing. So I get up, give my little speech. And he's going, I don't, I don't know how you do it. I goes, you know where I'm going, Joe? I'm going to go out to play 18 right now. He goes, what? I goes, I'm going out to play 18. I walk out the door. I go upstairs. He thinks I'm really going home and going to play 18, right? I pull out a picture of my phone, show him that I'm at some place. I went upstairs to the eighth floor and slept until about 4 <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon and drove home. And to this day, it was like, I can't you're... fucking believe. I can say whatever you want. I can't fucking believe that you pulled that off. <laughs> I'll show now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> Yeah, the memories. I think that's what, what people. You talk to guys in different sports, right? When we're in lacrosse, they had their stories. We have our stories. Uh, like when the hockey pucks, like us, joined the lacrosse ranks, oh. right? It, they didn't know how to take us at all. They were like taken back. I'll never forget my first first or second game. I'd be B and N, and there's a coach there. He's got a bow tie on, and he's going, "Sir, sir, I have a question for you." I stop. I goes, "What do you want?" You're like. Yeah, you're being a jerk, and that's how they yelled at you on lacrosse. Excuse yeah. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Like, I'm, I'm used to yeah, having used to I'm used to having Dan Shine scream at me about I'll never I'll never work this league again. Yeah, right. To somebody going, <laughs> excuse me, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, but world. I don't know the rules. <laughs> 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 I 
I, it took me at least a year. It, I, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I don't. I tell coaches that all the time. They complain. Like I, I try to call the referee over, but he just wouldn't come over. I go. I bet you he didn't know the answer. Yeah, yeah. he you wouldn't know. know. Yeah. But the, the what the funny thing about. Because I remember some of those lacrosse guys, like Franny Doyle and and oh, they all those great, great guys, guys right? Um, they all said hockey refs made the best lacrosse refs. Yeah, because it was all managing a game. Yeah, the rules came later. Yeah, you know, offside. Okay, it's managing people. whatever. If you can manage the people, you can manage anything, right? right. In sports, right? And I, I think that's what's lost with the, the younger kids. They don't, they don't communicate. Like they're afraid. Like I had a situation today. I got a thing across my desk, right? And again, it's the same old story. The coach was being a jerk and, you know, this big long line, I don't want to go, I'm afraid. And I go, why didn't you address that early? Go over to the coach and say, hey, look, we're doing what we can here, right? It's all about player safety. You want me to call the player safety penalties except for when they're against you, right? That's, right. that's a big deal, right? Because the kids today, they're still trying to find out. Well, we just talked about it. it. It's, it's all about that sheer dollar, sheer experience, right? right? I, got, I had the fortunate ability, right, to watch you, Jimmy Doyle, Crab, all those guys just wheel people, right? Like, hey, we're not doing this today. Nice big lecture, right? And next thing you know, everybody's playing. And yeah. you're like, how the heck did that just happen? You handed out a couple of tens, you yelled and screamed. Like, I'll never forget uh, the Ray Bork, Ray Bork, Don Sweeney. Ray Bork's on the cushion bench. Don Sweeney's on Phillips Andover, right? And me and him go up and do the game. It was awesome. Both kids, both their kids are playing, and Don Sweeney just giving me a whole bunch of lip about something. You know, like, it was a call or non-call, or I called something, right? And he starts yelling at me. He comes flying over. I don't care who you are. Man, you're not going to do this. I'm like, I don't yell at Don Sweeney. I'm worth number. I'm like, I want to get yelled at by him. I think it's great. Like, he comes, like, over the top, like, just to yeah, kind yeah. of, like, protect me. But, like, yeah. I was handling it, but, like, he had to come over the top just because that was our nature. Like, that's how yeah, I was. Yeah. And I've done that to – I've been on the lines and, you know, watch people referee and, like, I want them to – I'm like, oh, don't, don't, don't say yeah. this, say that. And I just got to bite myself because you got to let them do it. I, yep. I, like oh, Jim, yeah. Jimmy Doyle had some, he had just some great game management stuff. And my all-time favorite, me and him are doing a college game. And this team, uh, the ECAC called us up. They couldn't get anybody to do the game. So me and Doyle, what the hell, we're not doing it. It's a Friday night. We go. And this kid from Plymouth State, he just wouldn't shut up. So Doyle fuck, calls him over finally uh, in between periods, right, because the kid was just a complete – you know, basket oh, case to yeah. us, right? And uh, Doyle goes to him, he goes, would you like an aisle seat or a window seat? And the kid goes, what do you mean by that? He goes, you are dismissed. I'm not <laughs> listening to you in the third third period. You can pick a window or an aisle seat, but you're not staying here. And out the door he went. That's awesome. <laughs> That's the stuff that you don't get. Like, Jimmy's the best. Oh, he was awesome. And one more about Jimmy. I, I loved working with him, right? So we're doing like a New England Pro-Am game up in, up, up, up in Stoneham, right? And these teams were just, they were just carving each other all night. Yeah. And Jimmy had had enough. You know how Jimmy gets, the oh. guy starts going, like, here, right, right, here, right, 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 skates over. And he goes, that's it, I've had enough. He stands over the penalty box. He goes, hey, Red, go to your bench for a second. And he says to Boo, go to your bench for a second. He's at the penalty box, hit stone him, right? He yells out, good night, and walked off the ice. <laughs> See you later. It was great. It was great. And Jimmy's probably one of the only few people that can get away with that. Oh, it was, it was and no one, Everyone well, probably just went home. Yeah, because he was going to get the phone call. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was great. He's the best. But those are the memories, right? These, yeah. It, I, I don't see that happening anymore. Everybody, even with the coaches, like, there was camaraderie. We used to go out with the coaches afterwards and knock a couple down and talk about the game. Yeah. Today... They want to beat you up after the game. I go, um, I missed a hooking call. What do you? What is going on here? Yeah, they're so intense about the wins and losses, and not about what's really going on. Yeah, right. And that's and well, that's I had a that in deal. a college game. I was telling you oh, about it's ridiculous. Uh, you see my phone. You know, the, it, it, you know the changes are early, so I warned the coach twice. Oh yeah. I warned the assistant. Oh, yeah? This is a college game, and they all acknowledge it. Yeah. So the next time they do it, I bang them for oh, too many men. And he goes off. I can't believe this is the first time you. I was caught. I said, "Hey, I'm sorry. I'm the first one doing it right." Yeah. And blah 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 going at. And I'm and I'm going. Are you are you okay right now? Like this is what you want to do. And then his uh, assistant captain after the periods that's giving me the 
you know, he's doing this like because it was a slash. He's hitting his arm. I, That's I an easy him. 10. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. But it was easy at the end of the game. If I'm not mistaken, I think we're going to return that favor in a scheduling conflict, right? You yes, have to make are. a change. Matter yeah. of fact, I got the game I want to do. I'll let you know after. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'll be fun. But he, I, he, like, and he's still chirping me going off the ice. And I'm going, do you know how many people that could be doing this game? Right. And I'm here doing this game. You know, and not that I'm something special. I only lasted a week in the NHL, let's be honest. But I got like 500, I don't know how many pro games. And I'm here tonight doing your game because I don't have a comedy show tonight. Yeah. And you're going to bust my balls? Is that what you it call it? It was like, well, you know, that's what that's what I call it. You don't call it that, but that's all right. And, uh, but but then he comes, I come up for the second period. And, uh, you know, and I had two young linesmen with me. And they were like, you know, didn't know how it was going to go. And I said, we'll see. He'll he'll let me know how this is gonna play out. Yeah. Because either he he's I'm gonna bend him over the whole game, and um, in hockey terms that means we're gonna screw the team, um, and then because uh, we don't know who's you know yeah. there could be non hockey people listening on, and that was not uh, meant to offend anyone, <laughs> but I was gonna bend him over, and um, and then you know or he was gonna be he was gonna make nice. Yeah. Sure enough, called me. Oh, I've had too much coffee, Riles. I'm sorry. I, I I got too much into it. I was, you know I just never had called it before. And I said, well, you know what? It, it's going to be called again if you keep doing it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, so it's like that simple, yeah, we're not going to deal with this anymore. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you, you know? got to put that fire out early. And a lot of kids today, they're just so – and I don't know if it's because – and I, I don't see it because we back our officials for the most, you know, we can only yeah. back you to, to, to the extent of if you won't go over the yeah, line, right it's yeah. a problem, right? But we give these guys the tools to, to – Communicate, like yeah. put the fire out. Don't be afraid to be assertive. And I still think that they think that the coaches run the league, right? Yep. And that's a per per perception because, oh, I'm not working that game again. And me from a signer, right? Sometimes you might not be working that a game, but I might be protecting you, not them. Right. Right? Why am I going to put you into a situation where it's hostile when there's 500 other games, right? Yep. That doesn't mean I'm not going to stick you back in later, but you know what? There's, there's nothing wrong with taking a little air out of the tire. Yeah. As we and also about. let them see what else is out there, too, right? right? Like, oh, actually, it wasn't bad. And... Like, now I just saw three shitty guys. Yeah, oh, right. <clears throat> the kid last week really wasn't that bad, right? Right. Yeah. And sometimes it co a certain coach, especially if you see coaches over and over again, and that's something that some some of these younger refs don't realize. Right. Because you, when you're in a league and doing that league over and over again, or year after year, yeah, he, you get to know people. Right. And, and, and they, you know, I mean, we all have had coaches that we didn't get along with, right? Mm -hmm. or, or no matter what happened, we just didn't gel. You didn't see I you know? Know. But you still had a you still had to do the game and yeah. you still, you know you, you take that old Eastern Junior Hockey League, right? When it was small, it was good. I was a coach in that league, yeah, if you don't you remember. Know. Oh, oh, I remember. Oh, <laughs> I remember. Luke Galvin and I yeah. had oh, the yeah. Boston Harbor Wolves. Oh yeah. And we uh we yeah. pissed a few people off because they took things personally. Yeah. Let's be honest. Well, <laughs> I won't go there with Some you, but yeah, you know what? I mean, when when the, <laughs> the GMs best. when the GMs throwing hot coffee on the officials, I I can hey, understand we, why I they had were pissed. To do with that. I said the GM. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we you did, were the we yeah. Threw... No, you were the guy that just went like this. <laughs> the funny the door. Yeah, yeah, the, the door, door open. open. I got that. The best though. I, 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 I got to say for the uh, non-video audience. <laughs> one of the best stories though was down in Bridgewater. We were playing the Bandits. And Jimmy Byers was refereeing. Jim Byers, and a blast Jimmy's from the past. The oh, you told us that and a little bit. He, you know, and there was this just this thing happened at the beginning of the period. I saw it happen. No one saw it. We said, you know, and they even said we didn't see it. All three yeah. of them. And then we come out short, and that set Luke off. Yeah. And next thing you know, that he heaves the whole uh, milk crate of pucks. Yeah. And it was like slow motion. It goes out, lands, and explodes. Right. <laughs> and so Jimmy throws him out, but he won't leave. And I said, Jimmy, I, I, if I get him off the bench, will you talk to me? I just had a question. Yep, I get Luke off the bench, and then Jimmy skates away. And then I lose my mind. And I'm screaming and yelling, and it took him way too long to throw me out, put it that way. He throws me out, I go across the ice, I say what I say. The rink doesn't realize we know each other. Yeah. So the rink calls the cops, thinking that there's gonna be a problem between the coaches yeah. and the reps. So when the cops show up, the game had already ended, we're in the ref's room with Jimmy having yeah. beers. Right? Oh, awesome. And the cop comes in and goes, yeah, we understand there was a problem with coaches and a ref. And we were like, yeah, that was us. Coach and referee interaction, I think, is where yeah. you make or break your game as a referee. Yeah, and, exactly. and like, I learned from Andy Van Hellemann, one of the best communicators in the business. And, you know, 
up until then, I was a complete ass. Yeah. You know, in the USHL, I was a moron. I was telling coaches left, yeah. right, and center to, you know, go this and go that. I think that interaction is what makes or breaks it. And I don't think a lot of these guys, yeah, and I, I blame that. the phone. Yeah. But they don't know how to communicate. But you're also immature right? too, right? Maturity comes along. You're a young kid. Like yep. the same thing. Like I see it now with like with junior coaches. And they're like, hey, what's up with this kid? I'm like, well, he's 19. Yep. I go, you had 19-year-old players. I go, do you know what a 19-year-old player is to deal with? I go, I'm dealing with the same thing, but he's an official. You know, you get that? That's and they're like, point. They're like, oh, I get that now. I go... Watch, I go watch the other kids, like the Reddicks and, the, and those kids that are mature. You keep calling me and telling me how good they are. I'm like, because they're seasoned, right? right? right. So they had to go through that. You yeah. would call, you were saying, you, I go, I can look at the text message. Like four years ago, you were saying the same thing about Reddick. I go, right. look where he is now. Now you're like, oh, this kid's good. I'm like, yeah, and, because he developed. He, right. You got to give, let these kids room to grow. Yeah. Like nobody, like well, everybody's like all over us. Like yeah. refs aren't any different than players. And I think they forget that. Yeah, you, players develop. <coughs> they don't go from, you know, uh, Bantams or, or, or midgets up to, you know, D1 college. My daughter's it's playing goalie at UH right now. The most important thing right now, all I care about is her being athletic and having fun. Right? right, goalie skills. Learn the position. She sees like five, six hard shots a game. Like you're really not getting anything through games, right? It's all about skill and development and practice, right? And that's what I use youth hockey and junior hockey for. And when you get to the college and pro level, that's that's when you start flourishing. You don't want to learn at that that level. That's what the NHL is doing. They're right. throwing kids and, right in. And but like piece, you got to come up yeah. and develop. And the you other need piece, a foundation. Yeah. The other piece of that, right? Think of all like God rest his soul, right, Brian Few, right. Oh you, yeah, you guys. He was a the great guy in hockey, right? Yeah. Yeah, all those guys that come up, but you got to remember, you Sweeney and all those guys were 18, 19 years old, and you came up with them. And some of these coaches are coaching Division One. Some of the guys that look at Billy Riga, right? Like, yeah. yeah, like right. So the the relationships go way back. I, I was uh, Dougie Smith. Uh, plug for him. God bless him for what he's doing for giving up a kidney. If you can do anything for him on his uh, yes, Dougie Smith, Dougie, Dougie Smith, is the Dougie's goon. Great. Yep, he's awesome. So yep. he. Uh, He's me and him are going back and forth, and uh, I send him a thing. I goes, I just sent you 500 penalty minutes, right, I, for, for his cause, right? Yeah, yeah. And he writes me back. He goes, uh, and he puts it out on Facebook, which I thought was awesome. He goes, I met him when he was playing in the East Coast League in the early 80s, and he ref to read his first pro game on the lines with 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 us, right? Yep. And and then he's you know done what he's done but he goes it's the relationships he goes here was a kid from boston who i who i knew right it took care of me while i was there and we're still friends for life yeah, you yeah. know what i mean and yep. that's yeah. that means a lot and i i don't see that anymore i just see kids now if they don't and it's not an knock on you guys but if you're not doing something at a high level you just walk away from it you don't put any more effort into it because you don't think there's anything else and i think that's i think that's another thing that hurts the game take your time i told all these kids it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? Yeah. You might get a couple of good games in, and then all of a sudden you think you should be there. We, we, we have we have a 19-year-old stud right now, and, you know, he's he's pretty good. And I told him, I go, dude, don't – I go, just worry about the next game you're doing. I go, just keep doing that next game, next right. game, next game. You'll, you'll get to where you want to be, trust me. But you need to get that foundation. You need to work out all the kinks. Like last year, watching him do junior hockey – he was struggling, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like working through it, but like unbelievable skate, hockey sense. He has the whole package, right? Um, looks the part. And this year you watch him, he's schooled because he went through it. He, 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 like, you know, knocked the dust off and now he's flying and cooking. He's not thinking, he's reacting. He, you can see him process the game so much quicker and faster and smoother. And it's just all about the development process. And people don't want to go through those steps. It, it, it's like, you know, it, you got to make the mistakes here at the junior level, and junior hockey doesn't like to hear that, but that's what they're doing, right? right. Like it, but that's where you that there's nowhere else to go. You have to get the experience yeah. there, and then you get to the Southern Pro League, East Coast League, American League, boom, boom, boom. But right now, this three years is your foundation. Just work hard, like well, just bank it. Like you're just basically banking all your, you know, until you, till you get there. I blame <clears throat> everyone gets a trophy. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, once we started giving trophies to everyone, mm -hmm. now everyone feels entitled. Yep. And they don't have to work to be better than the kid playing against them right. because they're getting the same trophy. Yep. So why do you care? And then all of a sudden, reality slaps them, 
and you know they think, oh, I should be doing D one college. And no, that's a, and that's you'll be problem. lucky to do in Bantams and back in the but day. But then you go, in, you but, know. But then you get there when, like too soon, right? You make a couple of mistakes, couple of errors, and then you're never getting back there. There's a couple oh, yeah. of people yeah. that are sitting out right now that are going, hey, how come I'm not like, oh, I guess they don't blah blah blah. I'm like, well, you want to just get there, and I go, when you got there, you failed because right. you didn't have you a foundation, yeah. right? Like, but we see that at the we see at the highest level in the in the NHL, yes, yeah. You know, they're putting guys in that aren't ready. Yeah. And they're screwing things up left and right. And, you know. And, and they're okay with those mistakes, though. They, they're, they're, they're living with those with those errors and those bumps to for the end product, right? Right. The overall scheme of things, okay, we can we can live with a missed offsides call. We got some backing now, blah, 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 blah. Yep. But it's not it's not giving anything else for the guys coming up, right? Like the guys coming up and, and, and fighting I, for that carrot, it's a little tougher now than I when think, I did it. I think it's, it's because of the amount of hockey – it's changed the complexity of everything else that goes to because Jimmy Doyle, when I when when he uh, got into Division One as a referee, well, I'll never forget what he said to me. He goes, "Hey, the chase was worth it." He goes, "But now you have to fight to stay there, and it's not sometimes worth the fight because you get there and you're saying, you know, this is a whole different level, right?" Everybody just talking about you're coming from college division three where these guys really work hard. The division three coaches work their asses off, right? Funny you they, see that. They, yeah. they work that. And then you get to division one coaches where there's money on the line, mm. right? Jobs and on the then, line. I had a coach yeah. tell me that this morning. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, jobs and then on the line. because I made a hooking call in the third period sometime, you're going to tell me I, I lost your job and you, cha- you want to beat me up for it, right? That's how, right? that's how it's turned. Before you get, and uh, Billy Hanson, CM, right? He got. He, he was wild on the bench. Yeah. But when the game was over, it was like, across the street, down the street, where yeah, are we yeah. going? Right? Yep. It wasn't... It, the, the, yeah, when the he game left it right stopped, the When the game stopped, everything stopped. You weren't... Right. You didn't get into the... Like, I want to I wanna chase you down the, down yeah, the street. Yeah. You, show, you show that awesome... Uh, well, you, you taught what labor relations and work uh, relationships and this yep. and that, and you always showed that cartoon with the, with the sheep and the wolf. Right. Both... Are, both are, they live both in the there. They, they're both coming out to work. They're punching the ticket in. And then oh, the sheep... The, best. the yeah. sheep... Uh, what is it? The wolf's Morning, trying to get the sheep and the dog's yep. trying Morning to... Morning Fred, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fred. It's, a great, it's a great thing, right? And they punch the cod. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has a job to do. But when yeah. the job's over... You know, there's a lot more to life than wins and losses, and yeah. I think that's one of the biggest things that's been lost with the with the expansion. Because now everybody's depending on hockey as their livelihood. When before yeah. it was an advocation. And you well, take a guy you know, like Danny Esdiel, right? Salt of the earth. Yeah. Right. If it wasn't for him, another guy who had insight about tra- the referee side. Right. right. He was the first one to go with a three man system for, for and not make it uh, local. He made it like a regional thing, so right. kids were moving around. So there was no home cooking. He had a vision about officiating, right? right? And he did it because he loved it. You get a guy like uh, Riles, right? Gene Riley he used to sleep on a he used to sleep on a floor at the house because he could be because it, they didn't have hotels or nothing. So we right. the assistant coach, hey, if you're gonna if you're playing in Charlestown tomorrow, stay here. You don't have to drive back. We go and have a couple of beers, and you know I, I see him uh, the the night they shut the country down. Me and him, uh, he happened to be scouting in uh, Pittsburgh, which was my last my last duty uh, at the time before uh, at Atlanta Hockey. That was the last time I I, I went out there, and uh, we had a great time. And like we've been for friends for thirty years, right? Yep. But you know. We- now, do you think? Because now you're a hockey parent. Yep. You were a hockey parent. I was a hockey parent. Yep. Um, do you think? Because you bring up money, money, like the amount of money people are spending, mm-hmm. and not it's not just I in hockey. It. It's I wish across I had the that board. Article. Yeah. Right. It's softball. I mean, no yeah. matter what, everyone wants the kids to play in twelve months because they all think yeah. they're getting D one college scholarships. But hockey, especially, you got people dropping 13, 14, 15 grand on a hockey team. Yep. I, I like, actually wrote a piece about that when I was in college. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that I wrote about was why the big push, right? In Canada, right? In their heyday, right? The only thing those guys had was if you didn't make an NHL team, you were going back to the farm, right? Right. right? Working class people, blue collar people are taking on second jobs so their kids can play sports. Not just hockey. Right. Just for a chance to get a shot at it. And right. some of the best advice we got when he played, he goes, look, this ain't, you know, Riley could have got you up, but Riley was the assistant at Maine and said, hey, you can go up there, but you'd be the ninth guy, never play. But, you, but you're, you're on the team, right? Right, right. Got some good advice. The best thing was, was, in reality, 
if you're that good of a player, now especially Division Three is really good, if you can get into a school and play and enjoy it, that's a bonus ball. Right. Because most kids quit after their final high school game because it's just not – there's not a pathway for them. Now you got the ACHA. There's a lot of other places to go, and that's another problem. College right? club is huge. It's huge. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even know if they had that back in the day. Yeah, and it's pretty good too. Those t- yeah. those t- those kids come to play every night. It's well, you got good. kids that go to the D one schools yeah. that aren't going to play at D one, but right. could have easily played D three. Right. And they, you know, and they want to keep playing, fun. and yeah. they love it, and it's they have good. fun, and you know, um, and and so I think, um, it, it, well. Wayne Gretzky used to say he used to put his dad used to hide his bag up in the attic right at the end of hockey season and make him play lacrosse right. or baseball or whatever. Even the experts say you shouldn't specialize till you're 14. Yeah, and yet everyone is specializing at like it's six. Crazy. Ryle, Ryle, these Why? these kids have to sign up for teams, summer teams, right? And they're signing up for six tournaments in the summertime. So it's crazy. There goes your beach. There goes your vacation. Yeah. There goes your this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, yo, you just signed up for how many tournaments in the summer? Yeah. Six. Southie, for Christ's sake, when we were when we were kids, the rinks closed March first. Everything that shut was down. It? Yeah. Right? You yeah, like we weren't uh, gifted. We weren't going to the golf course. Right. We were getting chased off the golf courses. <laughs> but but you know it was baseball season and then summer. Right. Yeah. You were you were sailing up. You were sailing. You're swimming. There was something. Yeah other things to make your skill assets right yep. there was something to do and then you went back you look kind of look forward to hockey today like kids are burning out oh, like burning they're, out oh, yes. they're right. yeah, i got i got 70 games in on the summer i go what's the matter with you kid well you got 10 year olds having an 80 game season yeah it's like d3 doesn't even play that many yeah and call it like crazy what are you thinking and but it's all has to do with it's chasing the scholarship chasing right? the scholarship chasing, chasing the, the you know all oh, my kids gonna play pro hockey it's like no no he's not no. Yep. you know and if he does it isn't gonna be in the nhl yep. and which is fine but yep. you 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 know let the kid be a kid and then when they're 14, have them start reffing. <laughs> there you go. Free <laughs> ice. Remember that. That's it's, your honestly, paid, paid ice. ice. Paid. You get paid. Yep. You get to be a part of the sport. And you get to see it differently. And you see it. Yeah, I was just going to say, you learn the game from a different way. Because, like, you coach, it's a different game. Yep. Yep. You play, it's a different game. You ref, it's a different game. Yep. And, all the coaches. You know, that, yeah. I'm yep. fortunate to do all. I've done all three yep. at a decent decent level um, for each. And... It, you do see things differently, yep. and 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 it helps. You know, it helps all of it. The, when I'm refing, I can see breakouts develop. I can see four checks. I know where I can go, where I shouldn't go. The positioning, right? Say, it, it, and and it's um, uh, it, it's a cool thing to see the sport from a different angle, right? Refereeing, yep. You know, but then you have to deal with you now. Now getting back to hockey parents, I I knew I had an original point to that, not just money. They're out of their out of control now. Now they squirt always yell. Parents. They always yell. It's the squirts, yeah, right? Everyone, the the parents have always yelled. Like Luke says, Luke Galvin says they've been yelling since you know we dropped the puck when the dinosaurs walked, right? Yeah. But it's it's, it's different, different now because of video, right? Well, I think it's is it video. Is it what is it? I think it, I think it's two things. We talked about the money aspect of it, right? Yep. So now they think they have a say, and they're coming down. Nothing, like. I've ever seen before like a the, like it's the like I have a right to come down and tell you that you sucked today yeah right and here's a guy who's probably about 440 can't see his shoes right telling me how I'm gonna referee the game but if you're an eight you know 14 15 year old that guy's intimidating mm-hmm. right and then the next thing you know that kid's gone well right. you know something like I I was thinking about this and about people approaching you coming off the ice. Like, you're, you just ref the squirt game, right? Yep. And now you're going off the ice. Like, you head down, you're just getting off. Like, I, I'm thinking about what I'm doing in an yep. hour, right? Right. And then you pick your head up, and there's two parents there yelling at you because little Johnny just, you didn't call his, the obvious trip, right? So that's going on now. And yep. when I looking back, me and Boston Bob used to ref every Sunday over at, at at uh, UMass Boston, do the St. Moritz. We'd always have a three-game set in the morning, and then we'd go do like a single at St. Sebastian's or whatever, right? So once one out of the three games, I was approached by a parent. Now, like looking back, doing the mite squirts and peewees, this always happened. This always went on. I remember a mother coming up to me was like, what, what, is my, what are you teaching my kid if you're going to just let that go? And you called it on him. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I just want to I just, I, I just go play my game at... I got to go. Like, I don't want to answer you. 
<laughs> but no, it's it's, out of it's going. It's nuts. I, I don't know why people feel the need to go to approach a referee yeah. after they just did their kid's game and they expect an answer. And I know, like speaking as a a, a parent and a coach, right? I I get frustrated. I mean, I coach yeah. my daughter. You know, Me too. All the way out through it. You get frustrated, and you know you might yell, but you don't go nuts. You don't go to that next level. Right. Right. Now it just seems like everyone, and part of it is they're paying you know Big ridiculous dope. amount of money, so they <laughs> feel they have that right. But it's you know it, it's like it's just gone so far, and right. all they're doing is hurting the business because right. they're chasing they're people away. Scaring the kids out of it. So one of the things that you know get back to the, some of the stuff that we're doing on our end for the referee thing mass hockey's done a pretty good job they have uh they set up some safety nets they have a hotline there's a lot of things that they're doing what we're trying to do with 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 referees crease and and the usa hockey and the other uh governing bodies is uh it's trying to bring more kids in and tell them they're going to be working in safe environment we got to get on social media and saying hey look one of the things that that you got to be aware of right the things that you see on Facebook of, or, or anything, they're probably, if it's 20,000 games in the region. It's like it's, 5%. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so it's not an everyday. Most of the times, you're going out there happen. and you're enjoying it, right? I so call we, it the plane crash theory. Yeah. Right? The, the news doesn't tell you about the thousands of planes that landed that right. week. Right. Perfectly safe. They tell you about the one that crashed. Right. And now if you only watch the news, you'd never fly. Right. It's, it's, I think Same it's a thing. similar thing. Without a doubt. So, like, if... You know, you're a young kid listening to what we're, we're talking about, about the officiating. Uh, we're doing some real progressive stuff. Um, we just, uh, we made some major moves in the, in the hockey community that's going to allow us, where the rink owners uh, are starting to realize that this is a problem. And we're going to be able to run a lot of seminars and get kids in. It's not going to be, you know, from July 1 to September 30th, right? When the they have to do something starts. different. We're like, going to, we are going to, we have made a commitment, like I said, back in the rinks, getting more and more people. So uh, for us, um, you know, if you're interested in refereeing, go to our website, right, uh, refereescrease.net, refcrease.net, right? Yep, refereescrease.net. And we got a little promotional video we're going to probably show here at some point. Yeah, we're going to show a little bit of that. Um, Right on. And uh, matter of fact, let's take a look at that right now. Right on. We had a great day today. Uh, started off the morning at Bach, great ice session, hour and a half. Uh, everybody went through the drills. They got a good sweat in, a little break, a little lunch, then down to the classroom. The on ice session was getting the guys out there, getting them uh, to start skating like a referee. You know, we're playing, we're crossing over, and we're, our heads are all constantly on a swivel when we're playing. And when we're reffing, we want to be in control. We want to be uh, have our demeanor nice and nice and calm not crossing over as much and just starting to skate like a referee. I think the biggest thing they can learn is how to be better and how to represent refereeing and and referees and officials across the board as more professional organization. You know, the biggest complaint by some coaches is we're out there and they're out for the check. Well, we want to, we want to be better than that, but also advancing into the higher levels. You need to know not only those basics, but just skating alone, just the ability to work on your skating. You don't get to do that unless you go to a camp, say run by USA hockey or someone else. Um, just being able to work on that and understand how important skating is huge for these guys. Absolutely huge. And the positioning and the signals being crisp, being able to practice those, that's important, and they get that here, and you really can't get that anywhere. Good to get back, good to uh, go through the drills and in the scenarios that you would face on the ice, which is always good. And, you know, when we get into the classroom, just seeing those scenarios and in the games that, uh, you know, some of the people amongst us have been have been working and, and seeing the breakdown and having us break it down, it just, you know, really helps us for when we do get into those situations on the ice. You know, we already have the thought process going of, the decisions that we need to make. Uh, sure, a lot of the things um, that help me personally are videos, because I get to, especially videos of me working, because I get to see what I'm doing correctly, what I'm not doing correctly. It helps me change it so that I can go out and do better. Um, also, the on ice guidance with power skating. I mean, skating is such a big part of refereeing. We have to be able to put ourselves in the best spot to make to make the right call. So, uh, guys like Gino and Mark Riley heading out there skating with us that 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 helps us a lot. 
because right after the ice today, they were they were out there helping me with some. I mean, I'm a good skater, but I still have a lot to learn. So. Well, it's nice to be in a nice, uh, calm environment when you're not out there and you don't have to make a split-second decision, and you can actually have uh, create some good discussion with it. And we had a lot of different opinions and a lot of different, uh, a lot of different views on different hits and situations. Like some guys might think it's a minor, some guys might think it's a major, and then we can go over it and why is it a major and why are we calling a minor there? What I'm trying to get through today, as as, as you, most of the people saw it today, was gaining confidence, making sure the teamwork and when your voice is heard that it means something. It's not just uh, something in passing. You saw something, you want to be able to communicate what you saw to the, to the, the, the lead official, and, and the other side of that, the lead official understanding that, hey, you brought something to the table, we must assess it, and the best interest of player safety. These guys are trying to get better and learn from everybody else's mistakes, as you saw some of the videos today. But that's the power of the group. There was a lot of shared knowledge in here today. Different people brought a lot of different things. It wasn't Gene Binder talking about how it's going to get done. There was a lot of knowledge in the room, and thank God uh, for, for these guys that are willing to share their experiences without feeling like they've done something wrong. Here you get together, um, and not only do you get together and see guys and you know be able to catch up, share a story or two, but with Gene running the thing, He's, you know, he wants this, a certain standard set, and by showing everyone this is the standard, now we can build that consistency. And consistency is a huge word we throw around in officiating, but it, it's actually one of the most important words. I mean, even if you're consistently bad, at least the coaches, the players know what they're getting. So consistency is important, and I think by, by hearing it from the boss, so to speak, um, it, you know, and seeing what he's looking for, and what uh, Gene Jr. and myself, some guys who are supervising, what we're looking for, um, it helps everyone kind of get on the same page. And that way it's not completely different one game to the next, one referee to the next, it's more, there's more consistency. Yeah, so on the ice, when we're out there with a bunch of different guys, a bunch of different officials, we get to see how they skate, we get to see how they move on the goal line, all that, so you really get to learn what they're doing, and if you like something they're doing, try it out. See how it works for you. We want these guys to think they're part of a family and they're supported by us when they're making those major penalty calls or any situations where they're removing a, a coach from a game. And uh, if they did it right or wrong, we can, we can walk them through it. Again, I'd like to thank Paul Coquinos for his uh, time for us today at Bach Ice Center and Rick Tuzo here at uh, Foxborough Ice Center for letting us use this room. It's, it's, it's just a great thing that they want to see the progression as the officials as much as we do. So you really, do, I mean, it's, it's cool. What you're doing yep. is teaching, promoting, um, and, and, you know, that's key. I think one thing, like you had mentioned earlier, Gino, it, when, when we first started out, we worked with those guys that took us under their wing. Mm. You had the same experience. Yep. I think the problem now is there's so much hockey guys have to go ref the higher level stuff they can't go and ref with you know a brand new yeah, official you just don't have them right it's, you just don't changed. have the numbers and, and i think that like you said the top is hurting you know and because the top is hurting the, the bottom, bottom is hurting, hurting. And, and, and our focus right now sorry Jim. no i was just gonna say the, the reason why guys not coming back is because of the bs yep. right like like ryan sweeney one time he told me he and this is probably why he's never done it because he's had a bad experience from a dickhead fucking coach Yep. And it pisses me off. And that's why, you know, like, here's a kid that worked pro hockey, willing to give back, wants to help out a 14-year-old kid because that's how we got up. That's right. how we, we grew up, right? So, right. and someone someone got up and, and dragged my ass to the rink at 7 in the morning to get me to where I need to be, right? So, we're going to do that for other people. So, we we started to do that. And then you get, get these coaches yelling and screaming at you over an offsides. And you're like, dude. And they're like, you have no clue what the hell you're doing out here. And I'm like, dude, I go, those aren't penalties. Those kids collided. I just did BUBC last night, and I'm here at 7 in the morning on a Sunday, and you're yelling at me? Yeah. Like, get over it. And that's why we don't have veterans come back, because we're constantly defending ourselves as officials, yeah. constantly. Yeah. And I'm sick of defending myself. That's why I got off the ice. I was getting sick of answering the same goddamn question, why yeah. that wasn't a trip, and that was. And I what just you say? Death by a thousand, thousand paper cuts. Thousand paper cuts, right? Yeah. Like, I was at wit's end, and people go, when was the last time you ref? I go, it's been two years. And, and you know what? Like, it's it's been nice. I miss it. I miss the adrenaline rush, but I don't miss all the BS. Yeah, and, we, but you I enjoyed I it when I came up. I absolutely loved every minute of it. 
but enough was enough. Like yeah. now it's just too yeah, much. He, he can't do his alma mater. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. I would love to do Salve. I wasn't gonna say no, I'm just, no we're just, gonna do a game. Trip, trip. We're gonna do <laughs> Let's do it. We're gonna do a game uh, at some point, whether it's uh I don't know, we'll set it up um Absolutely. And, and tri- we'll we'll be uh We'll torture people. That's for sure. We do what we got to. Um, we, we should do a Bruins alumni game. We get, oh, we easily Donnie Garcia. Donnie, 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 your little Donnie, friend, yeah, Donnie he's, he's the best. <laughs> he's the best. We have a lot of fun together. Does he get any hookup with Celtics tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong sport. <I laughs> Cameron wants to go with my daughter. That's all yeah. she yells at is basketball. I, stopped, I stopped playing basketball when I lost a start and center's job in high school, so I don't, I don't really pay attention to <laughs> You stopped basketball. playing when you stopped growing. <laughs> and five foot nothing. What does Aldo say? What do you join, height watches? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, make it up. Well, that's why you referee hockey, because yeah. the skates pump you up yeah. a good six, seven inches. And then you so, got your, right? your money back from the gym membership. Yep. <laughs> we yep. had some fun. When I was coaching, you did a couple of my games. Yeah. Man, we had some laughs. Oh. And people like, uh, like it's funny, because I see kids that I refed, right, when, yep. when they were kids and everything, and now they're on the bench. And I did a junior game a, a couple months ago, and like, all that. the coaches are there going, oh, you're back on the ice. <laughs> that is great. And the parents are like, Who's this guy? I come yeah, on, yeah. You, know, you come out. Everybody shake my hand, give me fives and stuff <laughs> like it was like, right? Yeah. But we had all these kids. It was great to go back. Oh yeah. Right. I still have fun doing it because I've never been that guy that. It, and one of my favorites is the guys from Buffalo, uh, Spr- Syracuse were out, and I had to come out and do a game. And Peter Masters and Mike Anderson are on the bench, and there was this other coach from another school, and they see me coming down the hallway. Right, and the first thing Mike Anderson says, "Do not say a fucking word to this guy." <laughs> yeah, right, right. So I got this kid from Syracuse with me. We go on the ice. We're about 15 seconds in. Whistle blows, and this guy who just rifles one at the goaltender. <whistles> You're coming with me. How the fuck can you call that? Blah blah blah. I goes, "Excuse me," right, and then I pulled the Jimmy Doyle line, aisle. Oh, window, window. <laughs> right? He goes, what do you mean? I go, you're on your way home, kid, right? We're 15 seconds in. And and Masters and those guys are saying, told you, <laughs> don't say a word to him. You want to discuss a penalty? That's one thing, but don't get in my face, kid. And he was he was gone 15 seconds I see in. that so much watching these junior games. I'm like, why do you take so much lip from people that aren't a captain? Uh-huh. I go, why do you have a conversation yeah. with anybody? Yeah. I go, I, like... The, my only answer to somebody that comes up to me without an A or a C on is, I don't see an A or a C in your jersey. Like, yeah. you don't even acknowledge your, their, their comments. You don't have to. I love when they say, oh, uh, it fell off. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, we'll like, go iron it back on, yeah. kid. Yeah, when, when it's back on, yeah, well, then we can have a conversation. I, that's kind of a funny line. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. You know, but it, it well, kind of gets them off of being a dick, too, right? Like, or strays them off. They're like, okay, and then maybe well, they they'll go. they forget about what they're angry yeah, about. Right? Yeah, right. A lot exactly. of times, yeah. they make them think. Right. Yeah. And God forbid. <laughs> um, one thing that I found really fun, because I took about 10 years off from reffing, because I, I got, you know, I got bitter. I threatened that Quinnipiac coach. You know, I yeah. kind of lost my mind. So I had to take time off. Yeah. And, every, you know, finally, you got me back. And I loved coming back because no one knew who I was. And, you know, they had no mm. idea. Like the St. John's prep coach, uh, my first high school yeah. game back, you know, uh, I tell him, that was close to too many men. Well, we're not calling that tonight. Third period, kid breaks a stick from, uh, who are they play? Central Catholic. He's not even halfway off the uh, across the ice. Kid jumps the bench, and I'm right in front of the bench. And he goes, that's too many men. I turn, I go, I thought we weren't calling that tonight. <laughs> he had no idea what to do, right? Yeah, right. That was the fun part of coming back and, and people mm, not knowing, that's a good one, yeah. you know, um, who the AIC coach that I bench. Remember oh, yeah. my first it, game in 15 years? But we did a game together. In, in Dorchester a few years ago. Oh, remember the guy, that game? Yeah, the guy, a, the, the guy was, from... Oh, uh, I remember this story. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the um, uh, Terriers, I think. <laughs> yeah, a clown. This guy, oh, you guys were on a roll, too. You guys guy, were doing a ton of games together. Yeah. We, he had no... And no, we did a bunch that yeah. that year. But he had no idea who... Uh, who's on, um, who was on the other bench? Whoever was on the other bench knew... Knew you guys, us, yeah. But he had no idea who we who were. We were. Yeah. And not that we're in, but, you know, we know what we're doing. Right. And he, and it was like a U15 game, I think. Yep. And he just, he couldn't help himself. And he, he called. And I remember you at one stop and you hand me the puck and you go, does he have any idea? I go, not a clue. <laughs> That's the best. And he's going to find out. <laughs> I used to love a tweet he would hand me the puck. Oh, you going to get him or am I? <laughs> we tortured that guy. Right. Tortured him. 
clown. He clown. Called, he called, he called, us, he called, he called, he called clown. me a clown. <laughs> Like, like I always call it. I'm like, I'm like, we give. I'm like, coach, we just gave you the answers to the test and you failed, yeah. and that's bending them over, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. just like you gave. Like how many times are gonna tell you to watch your changes before you're gonna get get whacked, right? Like yeah, like I'm not like the rule books hard, not hard covered. You could bend it a little bit. Everything's not a penalty, right? Like trying to work with you, right? Like just trying to work with you. Exactly. So one of the things that that I I want to just discuss a little bit before before we go on any further is the process. And I think one of the things that we really need to talk about, anybody's listening to this, there's a lot of young kids out you there. You said that, that like no one's games. listening. If anyone's listening out yeah. there, we got thousands of listeners. No, Come no, on. I'm talking about- <laughs> Millions of subscribers. Yeah, I'm talking about- Click below. The way no. you said that was so sad. <laughs> Like yeah. If anyone's out there living, it. well, look, come on. This, 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 this ain't the 6 a.m. radio show. Right? <laughs> Five this is, that was the funniest thing ever. Yeah, this is, sorry, this is W000 <laughs> here. Like, uh, we're, we're in some Will we're Smith in, We're in May. If anyone's right? out there so, and can hear uh, us right now, it, please but, send look, look, if you have man, a man If you're having trouble getting assignments, <laughs> right, that's a big deal. A lot of kids that come in, they, they go to these... You know, they get their certificates and they get their crest and everything. There's no place for them to go. Uh, we want you to know if there's, again, if, if, you, if you are registered and having trouble, reach out to us. Uh, we're very proactive about getting you, getting you in there. We control a lot, a lot of hockey in, in the region. And if you're not getting work, you know, they, sh they should reach out to us. Yeah, and information will be flashed below, right? Yep. Yeah, we can, we can, yeah, we can something. flash that up. I mean, the cool thing about referees, Chris, is that you're soup to nuts, right? right. You, you assign, you teach. You yep. do payroll. You do everything. One call does it all. One call does it all. Right. And but I think the really cool thing um, is the Monday night quarterbacks. Uh, every Monday night, r you guys run a Zoom, and we get on with you know how many of a refs, hundred, right. hundred fifty, sometimes two hundred. Yeah, sometimes. And we show videos. We talk about things. Um, Discussion. Referees can. I, I want people to come fantastic. up. Yeah, bring bring up something that happened in your game, like youth hockey. Like yep. we've like I sat on a Sunday and dissected a mic game that my uncle ref, but. Like I still watched it. I mean, because there was it was a big to do. Like yeah. parents are yelling, screaming, hallway yelling. Like, and I was like, it's a mic game. These aren't penalties. This is right. Yeah. And yep. It's unbelievable. Like what what the perception is in a mic squirt. Yeah. In a pee wee game, it's it, just the best. Why why are we yelling for penalties? First of all, yeah. Like, it's and player it, safety. Someone's swinging a baseball, like swinging or hitting. That's when you, that's when you start, you know. And, well, and that's when you the ones you got to get yeah. right. as a referee. You got to get them. And some of the problems when you're watching, you know, Big Al when he's out there, right? Uh, the last time we were out there, they just painted him orange and the guys just went around him. He was the human <laughs> human <laughs> cone. Uh, he was just out there he's like- He's come up on the podcast. I mean, how, like, how do you get hit with pox in a U8 girls game? <laughs> like, I don't, like, how are you even in the way? Like, I don't understand, like, how that's even possible. Like, that's hard to even do. Every once in a while, you'll punish me and give me a game with him. Yes. I, right? Oh, yeah. And the first thing, I, the last thing I say before we step on the ice, I look at him and I go, don't you fucking embarrass me. <laughs> and he goes, I won't. <laughs> we go out and those are the games you see him cross the blue uh, lines. He, moved, yeah. Yeah. Oh. he crossed the what? The blue lines. Oh, yeah, he did. Can he see over? He him? knew. Oh, he knew. Man. He is. Yeah. He but is the best pitch. thing about, I was going to say, the best thing about those Monday Night Quarterbacks, the one, the one, what I enjoy is when, you and I, or you and I. Oh, we disagree on disagree stuff. Disagree on yeah. stuff. And we're going at it. And I, I watch the Zoom. It's all on Zoom, right? Yep. And I watch the faces in the boxes. And there is some horrified looks because they don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, they think it. And we're going at we it. That's not a check. Come on. Brother. You should hear some of our phone conversations, like like arguing over. <laughs> you told me that's not a hit for me. I'm like, no, nah, it's like that. Nah. <laughs> you shit me, right? I'm like, I'm not. I'm Best. just like. And I love when you go, eh. Well, that's a major, right? No, no. I got nothing. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like, all day long, he's on conference calls. He's doing this, then he shows it on the video. I'm like, I, I got not nothing. That bad. Yeah, well, I what's, that. what's great, though, is that's why I think it's good that, like, sometimes we get together and we look at the video. Yeah, before, ahead of 10. But I, I like not. I like, I like not. I like, not, I like, like Toucher and, well, Toucher and Rich old show, like, their bits would be like that. So, like, that's kind of how I'm like, no, don't show yeah. me the clips. I want a first. Re I want the natural first reaction because right. it's organic. It's not. Right. It's. I like that way better. It, oh, it yeah. works. It works on the podcast too because sometimes, like, I, I don't even realize that he has some clips and I got the same shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny how it just goes. And like you know, we talk sometimes before and get some themes, but yeah, I called him up ahead of time because you don't pick up the phone. Um, but I'm uh, busy. I got two kids. I got a. But I just got a new puppy. What I still think. 
I still think some of the best times that we've had was we brought the college coaches on. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah I, I think good. the Sorella and Dave McCauley uh, interview was, good, yeah. was one of the best Zooms that we ever had. You had two coaches who really did it in the heyday. Oh, yeah. And how they came around is saying, you know, it is about player safety. Yeah. But I don't so know if listen, McCauley's there, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dave doesn't yeah, think anything's a penalty, right? No, I, yeah, he's, no. he's the, the best. helmet comes off with the head in it. And he's going, yeah, that, that's you call that a minor? <laughs> that's a minor at best. I had a major penalty. We're going on the power play for five minutes, and I go, yeah. "Hey, go!" I go, "Dave, I go, you guys got a got a, I got the major there." He goes, "Gino, I don't even think that's a penalty." <laughs> I'm like, you're, I go, I go, you're taking the power play. You want me to go take it down? He's like, no, no, no. But, <laughs> well, and, and, and you mentioned Chris Sorella. He went what? through the coach's re-education program. <laughs> yes, Delphi. he's on a couple times. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was being a little too harsh with the younger ref. So Luke and I went in and uh, we, we Yeah, I almost, we lost my jo- I almost lost my job over that. But yeah, that's but it, was, right. it was a great story. <laughs> and, that gets, <laughs> and, that, and that gets brought up every coach and Zoom meeting, by the way, too. So thank you. I think and he had eight, 20. What was it, like 22 penalties yeah. to two? Every, and they were all legit. They were all there. So yeah, it, it, there. it almost gives them like a fair game. Hey, I took my penance, but this time, you know, it's uh, like he always sets that up. Oh, mate, but sure. he's he's unbelievable to deal with. I, I actually, uh, he's the best. Yeah, We he, had fun that game. And, and he gets it. Like, he's he's heated during the game. Like, people don't understand. Like, uh, he'd be swearing at me. I'm not just saying, but you talk to him? But Are you all done? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm all done. Right? right? Yeah. But that's how you treat him. He had a say. Are we going to move on now? Yeah, yeah. That's and well, the that, thing I really like about Chris is he really cares about his players and his kids and getting them into college yeah. and his and his his you know his rate's pretty good like he gets all his kids into schools like his track record's really good yeah. and yeah. he really does care about. I hit it off with him because I I told him from my angle that wasn't a trip coach and then like the second time over from my angle I didn't have anything so the third <laughs> time he goes let me <laughs> guess from <laughs> your angle <laughs> I go you're a quick learner and <laughs> I skated away he's one of those guys that you talk about that that's not around anymore right yeah. like you know. He'll yeah. he'll lose his freaking mind, and me and him will be on the phone back and forth for a week, and then next thing you know, we're yeah. hugging and kissing. It's like nah, mo- I, I think the high. What's cool about the hockey community, coaches, refs, refs, uh, play whatever. It, the majority of them are good people. Yes, because yeah. hockey, hockey people, people, people are good people. You know, and and that's not to uh, you know uh, disparage any other sports fans out there. I think hockey's but the best hockey people. People yeah. are the good people. It's just the the way it is. Really good. Um, want to uh, I, I like to I'd like to wrap it up with um, uh, just hearing a couple of because you're in a position oh boy where oh this is good you get you know you get that phone call that last minute phone call because this is why I could never assign because if I assigned games and people turned them back or didn't show up or whatever I'd lose my mind and probably go and you know to their house okay, what are so, some of the best so, excuses you've had for no like it's, it's great we, we get up about 4 35 o'clock in the morning because that's when we really have to be three to four hours out because if this changes, people calling in sick. Uh, we oh, meaning whatever. you, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I get up. Yeah, I, I, I. But it's it's okay. I'm used to it, right? I, well, because we got to do all the discipline. We got to. No, I know. I'm up yeah. early too, but not that early. So, if anybody remembers the cartoon Henry, where he's looking for the hen, where he's looking for the honey all day, because his wife put it someplace and he thought he was all out, and he's going out with his with his uh, his uh, baby Yui. Oh, but yeah. And he yeah. gets right. beat up and, and, and he stung gets all beat day up long. And he stung all day. Yeah. And then his wife goes to him, what were you doing all day? And he goes, I was looking for honey because there's no more honey left in the house. <laughs> and she opens up the door and he like absolutely flips out. Like you can see him. Honey, like, why didn't you just yeah. say so? Yeah. <laughs> That's me when I'm answering the phones on early in the morning. With, like uh, Andy Panda. Yeah. Red, 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 yeah. red, 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 red. Oh. The bailouts, right? <laughs> oh, I, uh. You know, I something come up. I, I I can't make it. I've got I've got two that really really stand out. The, actually, three. The one with Bob Rotundo is pretty. But funny one's too. a true story, and we can get to that one with Blanchard. But go ahead. Oh, what the, oh yeah, that's a good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. There's one with Kinch too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you can't make this stuff up. I get I get the classic phone call. The kid's supposed to be at the rink 20 minutes ago. Right, he calls me. Uh, he he texts me by the way. At the, yeah, at text. The time. Yeah. He goes, "You won't believe this." Uh, I don't only really have one flat, but I got two. So I have to wait for AAA to come and get me because I don't have a second spear. I would have called you, but my phone's dead. <laughs> He's texting me. <laughs> I would have called you, but my phone's dead. Yeah, but right. he could text from his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sitting yeah. with two flat so, tires. Uh, yeah. uh, Send like, me a picture, kid. Yeah. yeah, well, that's another one. And Barbara, who gets two flat tires? Yeah. 
Well, no that kid did. Flat times. You know what I mean? I took him for his word. Uh, <laughs> sure you did. <laughs> I, get a flat, the other, I, I gotta tell this story about a flat tire because it was at a hockey rink. Remember the Foxborough League a couple of years ago oh, yeah. every summer? Oh, yeah. I came out and there was eight nails in my tire from a nail gun. A nail gun. Yeah. And I swear it was a, 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 a case of It was a case of sabotage. Car identity. Because I, I went to the shop and he's like, because I'm always pissed at you. I don't even know what I did. Anyway, that was one flat. That's what you get, one my, flat. My, my other one is, this is God's honest truth, I get a phone call about 11 o'clock, and this is when the technology just started coming, right? I think we had like a sign by web or something at the time. It was relatively new before, before Horizon came in. So this kid gets a text on his phone, right? And he calls me up in a panic. He goes, hey, I, I just got the text. He goes, I'm supposed to be working for you at 3 o'clock today. He goes, I can't make it. I goes, why? What's the matter? What's the emergency? I'm getting married today. No. So he took assignments on his wedding day, not realizing his wedding day. Now, I don't know about you, but calendars go way back, right? You couldn't put that in a calendar. I'm, I'm going to be tied up today, literally. Maybe he wasn't sure it was going to happen. So oh, the, the best part, the backup. The best, yeah, the best right? part was my partner ain't going to make it either. He's my best I, man. It, it was my, <laughs> my, my they, husband and wife. They were doing the game, and neither of them realized that they, so they, they, they took the game. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, that's a, a true one. That's you can believe that. Yeah. yeah. That's believable. Oh, yeah. It, oh, that happened. That actually happened. And my, <laughs> I had another one, and I don't like doing it, but I, sometimes you just, in your gut, you got to know that something's wrong, right? So I get a phone call from this kid. He's about, you know, 10 minutes from the rink. It's snowing up, blah, blah, blah. And he calls me up. He goes, hey, I've been in a terrible car accident, blah, blah, blah. And I go, so tell you what. He had a three-game set. When you get the car over, right, to the gas station or whatever, take an Uber. Right, because you're only a couple of minutes away. Take a cab. I'll pay for your cab, but I need you to get the games in. About five minutes later, he goes, hey, we're in luck. It's not as bad as I thought. I'm going to get to the rink. <laughs> so I have Bob Rotundo, one of the best <laughs> in hockey, right? Yeah. He's, he's just a legend. We, we got a lot of opportunities because of stuff that he ran, right? So I go, hey, Bob, can you do me a favor? When this referee gets there, right, see what car he comes in, and then take a picture of the car to let me know how much damage there is. Yeah, no problem. He comes out, gets on the ice, blah, blah, blah. He sends me camera. Mint. There's nothing not wrong a, with the not car. Not a scratch. So I send it to the kid on the way out. <laughs> like he's getting this in his thing. He's going, well, you know, I, I didn't really know how to tell you, but he goes, it was really stoned. I was really nervous. I goes, well, just, just tell me you didn't want to go to do the game. Because now I feel bad that you totaled your car. Right? <laughs> People who make up the best excuses. Oh, like, yeah. And c during COVID, it was the best. Everybody had COVID that oh, day. I got a text at 1030 last weekend, like Sunday. Yeah. Hey, uh, my car won't start. I can't make my games. I'm like, well, what time are your games? He goes, eight and nine. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you're just texting me now. Two hours well, trying well, to yeah. get his car. He was out there yeah. going, come I'm, on. I'm like, what, on, was the, what was the thought that counts? You know. Right? He, he now we can't thought. get yelled yeah. at because we, he didn't call. That's but right. I go, but you know what? <laughs> if we charged them a game fee, I guarantee you, I would have got a phone call. Yeah, well, that's... Hey, it. listen, if you're missing games or whatever, you need some repercussions. There's no repercussions. No, my yeah. father used to say, you, you can motivate people one of two ways. Give them a buck or take one away. Yeah. yeah. So maybe yeah. it's time to start doing that. Yeah, but even still, like, we tried that before. And what happens? They just don't open up their schedules because yeah. they're afraid they're going to get charged a buck. Right, right, right. So there's within sure reason. I mean, yeah. we're not like whatever. But the 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 all time one was a co Brandon, Brandon Blanche had a college game. He's call, he calls me up. Go ahead. You no, no. You go ahead. No, this no, is you your go. story. This is not mine because so, I wasn't there. He calls me. <laughs> he calls me up. Right. He's got a Division One game. Right. He's going somewhere. D one college. D one game. college. D one college game. He calls me up. He goes, Hey, uh, I'm not going to make the game today. I go, fuck, blah, blah, blah. We're going back and forth. He goes, no, I, I, I can't make it. I goes, okay, tell me why you can't make it. Like, what's he the goes, excuse this time, yeah, right? right? Yeah, like, what, what do you got going? He goes, a plane crashed into my house this morning. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Did it really <laughs> pass? Good. On the news. On the, he goes, turn the Brandon news Blanchard's on. Brandon outside looking for, the I would have went in. In, the, in his house. <laughs> in his house. Like, landing on the roof, apartment <laughs> complex. Goes, right? Could you go get your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to burn to the ground anyway. What do you just do the game? His stuff's oh, in his house, yeah. Yeah. Completely ruined. The plane took off at Tewksbury and flew right into his house. Well, he lives right by like a, airport. an airport. I was at this, I was there one time, and I'm like, man, these are kind of low. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's in yeah, his house. They were really, really low. low. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little too low that yeah. 
Well, you can't one, make it up. Oh, you, you can't charge stuff. him for that one. Nope. No. All right. good stuff. You just pissed he missed the game. Uh, <laughs> you know, right. at, at, at the end of the day, right, it's really about the memories, the friendships. Uh, I've had a terrific run. This is my 50th year doing this, right? I started yep. in 73. I've had a great, great run. Uh, play, you know, we, we talked about uh, Gino's thing on his, his triple crown there. Very unusual, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a highlight uh, for anybody. And if you don't know, game. Gino finished his career with the Beanpot final, the Hockey's final, national championship final, all at the Boston Garden. It was uh, something that's never been done before. Yeah. That was really special. Never, I don't think it'll ever happen again. Right, but, uh, you know, it's the other good thing is watching the kids that have come through here. We've had a lot, a lot of kids come through this program and succeed. And I think for us, that's the most rewarding thing for us, believe it or not. We like, we like seeing people advance, and it's like anything else. They're all ships passing, and one, one, I think you said, what, there's about 15 generations of people that have come through here mm. since I started this thing in the... Right, I've been assigning since 1979, so that's a pretty, pretty big. Like you, like you said it, like yeah. you said it too. Like even getting to like D1, right? Yeah. Like, like I took, I, like Mary was like, "How come you're nervous?" On like I was nervous on a Friday night game down in Providence, yeah. right? He's, she's like, "Why are you stressing about that?" I go, "Because you only get so many chances at the apple, right? You only yeah. get so many chances at Frozen Four, and if you have a blip on a Friday or a Saturday, and then you have another one, then you have another one. Next thing you know, you're not getting playoffs." And I always wanted to work that final game. Like the whole the whole reason to work was to work in March work and April. Fi- yeah. Right. Like that's that was the only reason. Not the only reason. Well, I enjoyed it. Right. But just like the players, I always chased that carrot. Like yeah. I had something to work for. I had some like pride in what I did. And I always wanted. I strive for perfection, but you never got it. Right. Like there was major penalties I missed. There was calls I mucked up. But it's gonna happen. It's hockey. It you can't be perfect. And you just don't make those same mistakes twice, right? Well, what's really cool for me is uh, we've known each other for oh, yeah. I don't know how long. And I refed when you played. I refed yep. you. We've refed together. Now we're doing this podcast together. Um, we're supervising that's cool. together. Yeah. Like one of the we're first things. Like, as that's soon as really I took cool. over this job, I like started like getting off the ice. I called you and Luke. It yeah. were my first two phone calls because that's who I learned from. Yeah. Right? I'm like, we well, did your fr- I did yeah. your first D1 college game with you. That's right. I was the linesman. Yep. Which, yeah. Was that a Cornell? No, that no, was, no. We uh, went up to the, we did the RPI red RPI. and white. So he was like, go up and, and get in the middle. Yep. Riles will go up with you. I was like 20, 21 years old. Yep. Youngest kid to ever do a bean pot. You refereed the bean pot that year. Oh, I did. Yeah. But no, that was back right. in the one man system. Now we got 19 and 20 year old kids doing it. But yeah. um, with the four man stuff, it was awesome. But it was just like yeah. you just like I, back then like I really didn't know like what I was really doing I just went out and did it yeah. I was 20 21 years old and I was like kind of learning on the job but like I had a foundation I was reffing midget hockey at 15 16 years right. old like my 